They say you are what you eat, so I don't eat chicken feet. But I love me some of Grandma's pickled beets. Well, cut it up, put it in the pan, throw it over your shoulder and see where it lands right here in the farmer's kitchen. Baiters, taters, beans and corn, the cows in the barn and the sheep's been shorn, kids in the barnyard chasing Grandpa's chicken. Chicken, chicken. Spices, slices, cuts and dices, gonna slash your grocery prices right here in the farmer's kitchen. Help you grow your garden good with recipes to suit your mood. Try some grub you've never tried before. Smash it with a wooden mallet, gonna educate your palate. Right here in Farmer's Kitchen, in Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen. We're gonna cook something good now. Funding for Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen is brought to you by... L81 Bottling Company. Taste, love, and share the tradition. Harvest Energy Solutions. Harvest cabins when you absolutely have to get away. Kentucky Sheep and Goat Development Office. Try something different tonight. Salt Rocks, the flavor of life. Good Foods Co-op, Marksbury Farm Market, Weisenberger Mills, Your Village Shop. Hello and welcome to Tim Farmer's Country Garden. Hello, Mrs. Farmer. Hi, Mr. Farmer. How Do you, you come here often? Just when we're gardening. Just when we're gardening. <laughs> look, I just tell. Is it not pretty? It looks really good. Isn't I, beautiful? Maybe you don't plant it because it looks so nice. No, we're going to have to plant okay. it. We're, we're, our garden is so late this year. Why am I holding a hog ringer? Poor little piggy. Hope you're not getting hogs. No. Okay. You know what? I decided that with our tomatoes, um, you know, every year we get the cheap tomato cages and mm -hmm. it never works out. And I watched Bobby Joe last year do something that really impressed me. He took concrete wire and he made cages that were a little more permanent. Well, I decided to go a step further and I saw something on the internet where they took buckets, drilled holes in them, put them on the ground, and then you could put water in those buckets. Hey, remember Bobby Joe's bucket yeah. over there? Still, the horsemen keep, it, keep it going. Well, what do we have now over there? Alpaca and, and sheep. sheep. So we're gonna dump some duty in there every now and then. We'll dip the water out into our tomatoes. We'll water them as well. Now what I have got here, I bought this today at Southern States. It is welded wire fabric. It's three feet tall by 100 feet long, four by two, 12 and a half gauge galvanized fence. So what I'm gonna do is we're, we're gonna unroll this. Okay. I'm gonna take about 64 inches. How's that sound? Perfect, I like 64. 64 inches? Perfect, yeah. That's actually what I figured was about right. Okay. We're gonna make a circle out of this. We're gonna take these hog rings that will clench the ends back together. Four in the bottom. Just like that. We'll set the buckets down in the ground, line up the plants, with the holes in the bucket so the water can get to the root system. Put a little dirt in between it. I want a little space between that, the bucket, and the actual wire. What do you think, Nikki? Like right I on? like this. You like it a lot? Yeah, I do. Because they always fell over, and by the end of the season, I couldn't even do anything with them. Now, these are a red beef steak heirloom. We're doing all heirloom this year. I'm going to come back very carefully. Watch our little fellers. I think the bigger's the better than the... Yeah. We're gonna push that down. Go ahead and kind of lock that in. Now, we have four plants in there. The problem we have with tomatoes is falling over. Right, always. And those cages, the cages themselves fall over. Right. This has got a broader base. They're gonna grow up in between, the base of the plant is gonna grow up in between the bucket and that galvanized fencing. It's a great idea. You see what I'm saying? I, I then like it. Could, it. Then it can all bush up and there's four plants. Right. So we have a smaller area, but a stouter right. area for them to grow. So what you say, let's get one going. Okay.
All right, almost at the end of this row. And we're almost getting close to the end of the building a smokehouse. Here's the next installment of John working on the smokehouse, working on the building. John Eckers, you're back. You're in your work shirt, and I'm not. You know what, I kind of like that. It's unusual, because I'm usually, you know, knee deep in mud or critters. Yeah, you're right. I just get in your way, to tell you the truth. Okay. You, you're used to doing this sort of stuff, and you do a wonderful job. But look, look what we got, we're getting there. We, we, got, we got where our hot stuff's gonna be, we got where our smoke's gonna be. We see the shape of the smokehouse coming around. What are we gonna do today? Okay, we've got all of our outside walls up, done, set, it's sealed and good to go. I'm gonna seal in the inside of the door, so there's no more leaks on it. Then we're gonna set another course of bricks all the way around flatways to build in the taper of our oven top. And then we'll set the top on. And you, when that sits up, you'll be ready to start a fire, even if we don't have this up and running yet. So we can give it a shot. You can. Anything outside of that happening today? Well, if I can get that on real fast and we don't lose light, I'll go in and start setting the plates on the foundation, maybe mm -hmm. framing some walls. Up. Really? Yep. That's getting close. Yep. All right, I'm gonna get out of your way. All right. I'm just a burden to you. I know. Let's go fix something here in a minute. Let's All get right. these last. Maybe one more, more row planted. We're good. No, let's just go fix something to eat. Okay, I'm starving. Okay. <laughs> From the garden to the patio. That was underwater. When we got all that big rain, it washed all our stuff out. And if you're wondering about where we are in proximity to everything else, if you've seen Moses and all our critters, it's just right over there. You can probably hear the chickens over there. They're making funny noises right Everybody's now. starving. Everybody's starving, and so are we. That's right. And uh, came from the garden. You look got nice. Up. Well, yeah. thank you very much. You look tan, too. You've been laying out? I've not been <laughs> laying out. I've been fishing and stuff. Okay. And by the way, you look nice yourself. Oh, thank what you. What are you doing later tonight? I'm free. You want to go on a date? I sure do. I got one right here. Here's a date. You know, that's to me is one of the most underutilized That's foods. my date? It could be if you want. I was okay. planning on taking this one, but oh. you can. One of my favorite snacks is a date. I know. With pecans on it. It's like your pecan pie. It is. And I mean, it's not it's not really cheating because it's natural sugars. Now, wait a minute. These are my ingredients for my recipe. You're not allowed to eat them yet, are you? Could I have one? Okay, one. You want a You want a date? No, that's okay. You can have it all. <laughs> oh. We'll have a final date. Mm. Now. That is one of my, no kidding, favorite natural snacks. It's good. You get some sweet, you get the, you know, and it's good for you. Right. But you're putting something together here that's got some stuff that's not so good for you, but most of it is. That's right. It's a salad. And we, we were eating out somewhere the other day, and we got like a Waldorf salad. I love you that. you said, ooh, we haven't made that in a while, so we're going to make one of those. You kind of change it up a little, didn't you? Mm -hmm. you kind of throw dates. your stuff, dates in them. That's a good idea. Uh, I mean, we go to our favorite store and we get dates. Right. On a date. Yeah. Uh, you want to tell us what you do? Are you going to help me out? I'll help you All out. All right, you be my mixer. We're going to start off with some mayonnaise. We're going to make our, our mix that we're going to like our dressing for everything. Okay. About, about two tablespoons of that. And we need about a teaspoon of sugar. And That's everybody does it different. You could probably use yogurt. You could probably do all, probably everybody you could use yogurt. Yeah. But we're out right now. That's right. A little bit of lemon juice. I'm just going to squeeze. Try not to get any seeds in yeah, there. You want to do it? I'm a seed fingers. person. That's probably good. Seeds in. Perfect. Is that all you need? Yes. That's probably more, but that's okay. perfect. <laughs> we'll see how it tastes. See, I get the seeds right there. Let's add some whipped cream to this. Can you go ahead and there's your spoon? Oh, that's a pinch of whipped cream. Let's see how it tastes. We'll go by taste and then we'll see how we like it. All right, now you know what one of my other favorite snacks is celery and apples. All right. So if it wasn't for all this other stuff we had in here, it'd be fairly healthy. So let's do about a quarter cup of celery. You want chunks you can taste? Yeah, make them small. As you're cutting celery, you know some big old honking pork chops we got over here. Yum. We got the big green egg going. You know, I have missed being down here. Now that we've got the patio back in place, we'll be doing we some do more it. stuff down here. Grilling, barbecuing, that type Yum. of stuff. Summer has begun. Summer has begun, thank All goodness. Right. Apple, I love this. This mm -hmm. is my favorite thing in the whole world. There we go, there thank we you. Go. That was straight. All right, isn't that nice? And we're gonna leave the skins on. Those are good for us. You can cut little strips. Yeah. 
and then you can cut it however you want. Some people do long strips, but like we now like what it. I would do is I would come back and cut that. Make like, it even littler? Like, like that in the okay. strips. Now, so we've got our pork chops sitting out over here. We're gonna put some salt, pepper, and garlic on those in just a little yeah. while. When I think of pork and grilling and chicken, tonight I want a little bit of zestiness. I so like I, zest. I want, just on our pork chops, I'm gonna make, tell me what you think about this, a honey mustard glaze. Yummy. Sounds sexy? It does. I'll eat it. Is that for our date? I'm, that, that is. That's gonna be our wonderful, thick pork chop. Along with our wall of salad, you know something very simple that we're gonna do along with this? A lot of people don't think about this, but a lot of people do. We're just gonna take some slices of pineapple and put on the grill. Mmm, that sounds good. Along with our pork chops and Waldorf salad, and we've got a wonderful, light, summertime, yummy fest. All right. That's the dogs are looking at us over there. I think they're hungry. Should we feed everybody? Yeah, we should have a while. You're ready, and I got some, if you wanna add that, but the one thing we're doing different, a lot of people put raisins. Now those are pitted. Yeah. So you wanna go ahead and put all this in here? Mm -hmm. And you could do anywhere, it depends on how much pecans you like, you could do a quarter to half a cup. I'm gonna chop these up a little. How many you want in there? in there? Oh, I don't know, four or five. Okay. You know, we eat out some, and usually one of the best things we do when we eat out is we find new things we wanna try. We challenge ourselves to, if, we, if they have something unique in the restaurant, to try to make it. All right, now we're gonna put that. Can I try it first? Let's make sure. You can. Make sure it's delicious. Obviously. Oh, I like it. Very lemony. You know what, I mm. like your lemon. It's got more lemon. That's really <laughs> good, I like it. Very, it's got a oh, nice tang to it. Hey, hey, you gotta put it away. Okay. You gotta wait for the fridge, pork chops. Okay. right on the other side. The egg's going. We're about to get these started. All right. What I'm gonna do is get the glaze going and then set that aside and let that thicken up. Get the pork chops done. Put some of those on it at the Yummy. end. Oh, I'm telling you what, I am starving. Well, let me clean Okay, up. let's put that in the fridge. Ooh, that is lemony. That's very good. Mm. All right, you ready to make our sauce? I'm starving, yes. So we can set it aside okay. and let it kind of thicken up. And then we're gonna put our pork chops on. Now we got, it, we got it fairly high temperature, like 450 degrees over here. You don't have to let pork go as long as you used to. They've lowered the temperature. So how long? Because I'm starving. Yeah, we'll know. Okay, just About 150 degrees or even a little less. So how many minutes is that I have to wait? Well, a couple minutes. It's not gonna take oh, long. Oh, a couple minutes, well, okay. Well, this, this, this won't take long. Okay. Let's go ahead and do this. Let's get I will help you. our little pan going. We're gonna go ahead, uh, let's measure some of this out in here. Let's go, there's one tablespoon, eh, two tablespoons and a half. Now okay. let's do the same with brown sugar. Okay. And I'm gonna let that go together until it starts to thicken up. Then when that happens, I'll tell you, if you want to go ahead and measure me out uh, a quarter cup of honey. That sounds good. Now when this sugar cooks up in here. You already see the tart and the sweet we got going right here? Yum. I remember we, we have our own vinegar, honey. We got vinegar and brown sugar. Where oh, we get ours? oh, oh, our own honey. It's funny you mentioned that. I'm ready. Mr. Alan Martin is coming over in a little while, and we're talking about the fact that we can be slinging honey very shortly. Okay, now I'll tell you what we're gonna do. Let's go two teaspoons of Dijon mustard here. Okay. All right, now let's come back with some salt and pepper. We'll add some more later. What about your honey? Can't have that yet. Go ahead and put the honey in. Quarter cup of honey. There has been one buzzing around here. Mix that that smells pretty good. Mix that thicken up. We're gonna boil that. Okay. So you're letting this thicken up? This is gonna thicken up. Okay. Then we're gonna set it aside. Gotta burp the bad boy. Oh, look at that. And towards the end, we'll put some pineapple on there, just enough to get grill marks on it. How about that?
more glaze. That looks Look at that. yummy. Now is that just wrong to eat this good? We probably shouldn't eat it. Look how pretty it is. You want to just take a picture of yeah, it? Yeah, let's just look at let's it. Let's carry it around for a week. Okay. Let everybody look at it. Look at that. Just look. Wow. Simple, easy stuff. I bet you've got every bit of this stuff in your kitchen. And that's kind of what we try to do with our recipes. Nothing terribly difficult. And if you smell the essence mm. of this plate, it's like zingy. You, you, you can smell the vinegar in here. You smell oh. the sweetness of the pineapple. And you smell, smell a little bit of the tartness and lemon in that. And I guess it's time to cut. You, oh, cut. Please cut. Look at that. That's for you. Oh, my. Go ahead. Is it ready to go? I think so. Mmm. 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 Mm. There's some pineapple for you. Yeah. Mm. You can do a maple glaze, too, which is delicious mm. on a pork chop. But wow, that's really good. You did good. Mmm. That's delicious. I've never hit it that lemony, but I like it. Mm -hmm. you, your extra squeeze. Mm. That's how you find out what you like. Look good. Man, oh man, keep cutting. You know what? That honey, that mustard together with that vinegar. Speaking of honey, let's go visit with Alan and see when we're gonna get some of our own honey as we chat out. Alan Martin, B dude. How you doing, man? All right. Your beehives have expanded. How many do you have now? I have 10 now. That's a bunch. Yeah, that's where I was originally going to cut off at 10, but I think I'm going to cut off maybe at 20 now. So technically, you could get like 30 gallons of honey in a, in a, you know, in a, in a, in a season? season? For a season, yeah. You get about what three do you gallons. do with all that honey? I'm planning on selling a bunch. Well, you know, I'm going to try to do, to do something <laughs> that, you know, get a little bit, yeah. So how many of your hives made it through the winter? Uh, I lost one. That's pretty good. That was, That's that was pretty really good. good compared to a lot of other people. Now, uh, we've been, we kind of go along on the farm here as, as things happen. Jay was over not too long ago and did some stuff. Today, I'm getting to that point. I was so excited talking recently about the fact that I might get some honey this year. You should get some this year. What does it take to get to the point where you can have some honey? You have to get a good strong swarm, get your bees time to get built up and, right. and get everything filled up. And we have plenty of bees in there. Usually when you get bees, the first year, you're not going to get any honey. You know, usually it's that second year when you should start seeing some, you know, payback from the bees. Payback, I want payback. Payback, that's what you Now let's talk about what we've got going on. I'm looking right now at Multiflora Rose. We've got honeysuckle. Blackberries Black, are blooming late. Blackberries are blooming, blooming late, but it's now started blooming around where I'm at. So you're here today for a specific reason. What is that? You brought something with you. We're going to add another super. You've a already super. got one. For those who don't know, what is a super? A super is what you put on the hive that they put the honey in. That's what you actually pull, and that's what you'll take from the hive. So you're putting this on so they can start adding more to that Add so I can take that. from that. You can take from that. Yeah, you've already got one super on there now. Uh -huh. And it's pretty much filled up and they're starting to cap it. So we're going to put another one on to give them, keep them from getting bored. Now a little B101, this is the time of year when you might see a swarm. Springtime, you know, this time, April, but real May. Real quick, let's take, a, let's take a, here's a picture of what a swarm looks like. Let's go back to where you and I and Jay went to a house where there's a swarm. What do you do when there's a swarm? What happens if you're a homeowner? or a property owner and you see this huge bunch of bees and you're like, what is going on? First of all, tell what's going on and then say what you do for well, this situation. What, what causes a swarm is, is the number of bees in a hive, whether it be in a hive or a tree or whatever, they get enough bees in there that uh, the workers decide it's time to produce another queen and for some of us to leave. So they'll uh, produce a queen, she'll hatch out, she'll go out, get bred, return to the hive, then the old queen will leave and can take up to half the bees with her. I'm so fascinated with the process that when you take this top off, I'm going to step way out of the way and be fascinated way over there. Well, if, that's, if you feel safer that way, we can do it that, that way. Did you get Did you get tagged the other day? Uh, yeah, Sunday I uh, come home and uh, had one of my hives had swarmed and right. they were in flight. And uh, I found out that uh, when they're in flight, it's best to stay back and just let them do their thing. Just keep an eye from a distance. Do we have you a know? picture of this? Uh, yeah, I've got a picture here? of that. We will share with the audience no, because we, we want to see you in all your glory. All right, we can do that. <laughs> all right, I'm going to stand back and watch you do your thing. Uh, 
right, what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to pull this frame up and we're going to take a little look, see at it and see what all they've done. And it looks like they've got them all drawn out. What's drawn out mean? What's that mean? Uh, what they'll do, you put the foundation wax in there, which is just a small, thin sheet of wax. When they draw it out, they'll go and start producing the cells for the honeycomb building and, and start building it out. This is all drawn out. You can actually harvest this right now if you wanted to. <laughs> this is ready to go in there. They're out there, they're ready to go. This box could actually be pulled right now and we could take the honey from it if you wanted to. Typically, I don't like to do it till the flow's over with. So basically, you'll put this super on top of it, let them start working on that, and then come get that? Mm-hmm. They'll, they'll take this, the way, the way the flow is right now, I put a uh, super on one of my hives with uh, just regular frames that hadn't been drawn out. And within a week, they done had it drawn out and filled full of honey and started capping it wow. in a week. Put it on. How many supers can you put on one of these? As many as they want to fill up. I've seen them as high as five, six, seven supers on. Well, I'll tell you, I appreciate you every time y'all come out here and show us something new. More than glad to. And uh, our audience. The more people we can get involved in this, the better off all of us will be. Oh, yeah. The way things are going right now, they're probably going to draw it out pretty quick. And, you know, you can in a couple weeks put another one on it if you want to. So we might just have to do that. Thank if you very much. If it's filled up, that's what we'll have to do. The bee dude is helping us out again. You did it. I did it. Look, I can touch their head. Look. They don't know it, but look. So you touch their head while they're eating. See? So you We're think touching you're them. them. Yeah, I'm petting them. Look at their faces while they eat. This one's Myron. That one's Milton. All right, well, I guess this is probably a pretty good time to tell you about our Facebook page, Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen. Like it, see where we're going, what we're doing, who we're feeding. And you know what? <laughs> Don't forget about the dinner train. Now, let me explain this just a little bit. There is no train here. We just call it the dinner train because a bunch of us are going to the same place and eating, like hop aboard the train. Oh, 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 oh. But this is an opportunity for us to get together with our Facebook friends and folks out there and have dinner at the Bluebird in July. Come join us for a meal fit for a king. It's going to be a lot of fun. And also, timfarmerscountrykitchen.com. Check it out. See some recipes you may have never seen before. We're getting real close to the 2 million mark. It's almost here. Thank you folks for watching us all over the world. And remember, it's all about good times, good friends, and good eats. They'll, no. be, they'll be hugging me next week. He just week. spit on you for saying that. Ew. You made him lose his lunch. Gross. <laughs> See you next week on Tim Farmer's <laughs> Country Kitchen. To order a cookbook or DVD of the show, please call 502-319-0487 or email timfarmerck at gmail.com. Special thanks to Furniture World Superstore. Ken Cove Farm Fence Supplies, Tater Knob Pottery and Farm, Your Village Shop. <laughs> Funding for Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen is brought to you by The city of Stanford, Kentucky. Come back home to Stanford. Woods Equipment Company has every tool you need to make working the land as rewarding as hunting it. Edward Jones, this is Shirley speaking. How may I help you? How was the trip? With nearly 7 million investors. It's right here. Hold on one sec. You'd expect us to have a highly skilled call center. Kevin, Neil Holly's on line one. Okay, great. And we do. It's how Edward Jones makes sense of investing.